guys. Today I'm going to do the Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 2, Episode 7. Not going through everything step by step. There are some things I want to talk about that happened on the episode, and we're going to go from there. If you hear the sound, it's the refrigerator. I have to record in the kitchen today. So, bear with me. Um, let's get the little small things out the way. You had, um, What's her name? Sharice and her daughter. They end up going shopping. And so Sharice just just wants to talk to her daughter about, you know, telling her daughter about the divorce that her and Eddie is having or whatever. She was like, you know, he loved you. Because she was like, how do you feel about your dad and me? And she was like, you know, he's like basically never there. So whatever. And then she was like, well, you know, he loved you. He loved Jackson, but he's wavering when it comes to me. And so she was like, well, what do you mean he's wavering when it comes to you? And she was just like, you know, we have our issues or whatever. People fall out of love. And so I think the daughter was kind of taken aback. First of all, she probably, you know, kids ain't stupid. So she probably looking at her mama like, girl, I already knew y'all was having issues. So, why is this coming up now? Um, and she probably was thinking, like, you really gonna ask me this? She's a teenager. Her friends probably watched the show. And now she gotta sit there and talk to her mama about this uncomfortable-ass conversation that she has to have on camera, if you get what I'm saying. But she basically told her mama, like, you know, he ain't never here anyway. He lives in Jersey. He ain't even working there no more, and he still lives in Jersey, so... It's not like something that I have to adjust to. So I think, you know, Sharice was kind of taken aback by that. And kind of, and she broke down in the store with her daughter. Her daughter ended up confiding her. And it was cool. Um, but like I said, a lot of times kids are not stupid. Especially kids of her age. Um, Monique and her cousin. They end up going to... I think it was Virginia because she had a house out there that they used to live in. That was like the first house they lived in together, but they're renting it out. So her and her cousin, she hired as her executive assistant or something she called him. But um, she they going through the house. They rent this house. I guess the renter's not there so they can film. And they're seeing a lot of things that were supposed to be fixed that wasn't fixed. And the cousin was like, you know, if you guys will communicate with me and stuff like that. It was about communication with this cousin. Like, you trying to go off on me about something, but apparently it's not being communicated. I'm thinking that this other guy is supposed to have been doing it, and it's not. So, some kind of communication wasn't going on off camera. Now you want, now that the cameras are there, now you mad that they ain't done. Okay. So, she just feels like she wants to relinquish some of her stuff to her cousin so she can have more time with um, Chris. So she also said that she needs to, she's thinking about she needs to apologize to Giselle for calling her a trick or whatever. So I was like, okay, that's cool. Um, then we see, okay, let's get into the shit that I really want to talk about because, yeah. All that other shit, I don't care about. But, no. Yeah, I'll start with them. Yeah, I'll start with them bitches. Now, Giselle, I liked you. A lot of times I was going to bat for you. Even when people was coming in my comments talking about Giselle and what and go. This episode made me turn all the way off on Giselle. All the way off. Even when she was helping Karen and was talking shit. I just was like, I'm, I'm, I'm over her. I'm over her, bitch. You are too old to be acting like this. You and your little sidekick ass homegirl. So her and Robin is walk, driving in a car. And all of a sudden, Robin is talking. They're talking about what happened at Monique's house or whatever. And Robin is said, I had time to think about it. So now I'm really pissed off at Ashley for questioning me. You know, I was annoyed with Sharice and... Giselle, but they did it in private. Okay, fine. You mad at Ashley for bringing this up while Juan is in the in the same place or whatever, and you say she's trying to start some shit. Okay, fine. You mad about that. You granted to be mad about that. But now and all of a sudden, 
Y'all want to act like bird bitches. Like, what y'all don't do all of a sudden in Potomac, y'all do. It's okay when y'all do it, but when other people do it, it's the problem. We don't do that here. Da -da 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 -da. But you do two bitches acting like straight birds. They go to Robin's place because Giselle put a battery in Robin's back to go confront Ashley at her place of business. You were mad that she confronted you and said some shit in front of everybody where she could have said something private. So you gonna go do it? Since she did it, you're gonna go do it? Isn't Ashley the young one? Ain't that what y'all say? So, she goes, they goes to Ashley's place. Ashley's place is packed out because, remember, she, uh, Robin told her to revamp the menu. So she revamped the menu. Now, I guess she put word out there and everybody is there. It's full house. So they come to her place of business. They see it's a full house. So ding, ding, ding. They should have told you this not this not the time or the place for this. This usually when y'all come it's empty, so it's okay. But not now when this girl is running around like a head. Oh my life, got her head chopped off. But she's working. She's at work. See, this is where bitches that get hurt and cut. I'm sorry. You don't fuck with my money. Period. My money and my kids. My man will get you hurt. But my, my, I'm telling y'all, my money and my kids, I'm going to jail for. I'm telling you, don't play with me. And that's what they did to her. Because these bitches don't have no life, no career. That's what they did to this young lady. She in there, people are calling off of work. So now she's not just in the back. She's on the floor working. They call her to the side. She's happy that they there. Hey, how you doing? Yada, yada, yada. They say, okay, let us talk to you over here. She like, you know, what do you want to sit? Oh, I don't want to sit. Then it's Robin all up in her face talking about, you need to stay the fuck up out of my business, out of my relationship. She like, hold up, where is this coming from? So, you know, Robin going off on her, and then Giselle jumps in. So I'm like, wait, hold up, bitch, this ain't got nothing to do with you. You take your home girl to confront her, whatever, but when you start injecting yourself, both of you bitches get hit with a bottle. I'm just saying. Um, you get stabbed with a knife on the table. Um, you know, my shit caught the ghetto view, so I will go get on some bitches that's fucking with my money. So, I'm just like, Giselle, really? Why are you going, getting in this conversation? So she like, get your fingers out of my face, Robin. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to have an opinion. I'm going to speak it. Whatever. So they going back and forth. And she was like, you know, after you said what you said, it was done. It was over. You over here accepting that he's cheating on you, bitch? That's on you. So they steady going at her. They just steady going at her. And I'm sitting there like, girl, punch one of them. Punch one of them. Today, I wouldn't even be mad because I'm just going to blame it on you, the young one. And they was bullying you. And they was in your place of business where you make your money. So, hit them. Just saying. Um, so, then, Sh Giselle started talking about, yeah, and Sharice, I got problems with you. And she was going to drag you. She was like, she going to drag me where? I said, yes, bitch, please tell them. I don't understand where they thought that fight was. First of all, it was okay for Sharice to want to drag Ashley, but when Sharice wanted to drag you, Giselle, you act like, oh, she was hood and she, it wasn't going to happen with you, between you and her, and you was this be more girl when it came to her wanting to fuck you up. But it's okay. You think she really going to drag Ashley. Guess what? Ashley wasn't always rich. Just saying. Remember her mama had that Patron bottle last season like it was nothing. Remember, she wasn't always the rich little prissy in the Potomac girl. Um, she ain't wasn't born and raised out there. Just saying. So, choose your battles wisely. Just saying. Um, okay, I know Cherie's jersey, so I'm just saying. It might be a good fight, but I don't think she gonna get dragged the way they think she gonna get drugged. So... Anyway, she like, oh, she gonna drag you through the woods and the woods. I'm like, girl, you trying to read and it's not gonna work. It's not gonna write. She just like, y'all get out. Like, both of y'all get out. And they end up leaving. Giselle end up saying, who eats? Whatever that shit was. And I'm sitting there like, you foul. 
you foul. And where do they do that in Potomac? Like, bitch, where are y'all from? Um, I know the people in Potomac be looking at them like, here they come with that shit. So, then, you know, Ashley calls her husband and, you know, he mad. He talking about he gonna destroy their businesses. She like, baby, they ain't got no businesses. I fell out laughing because I was like, yeah, they don't. You know, homegirl say she got this little catering shit, but... Yeah, that's a side shit that ain't off the ground yet. Whatever. Um, so then Ashley end up having a dinner with her mom, having dinner drinks with her mom and her brother. We found out her brother goes to college there, so he's closer to hers, and she's been in his life because his dad had passed away when he was young. Um, but she end up, you know, he is getting ready to go somewhere to help some kids in some villages. So I said, oh, kudos to him. Kudos to you, young man. I, I, I'm all for that. So, um, they end up talking about what the girls did to her. And her mom was just like, wait, that's, like, I'm mad. Hell no. Nah. The brother is like, that's unacceptable. That's not cool. So, you know, and it wasn't. It, I don't care which way people look at it. That shit was not cool the way they ambushed her at her job. Like you said, if you wanted her to do you a certain way, wouldn't you... Show her the way to do it, how to be classy, and be like, this is how you address a situation that you don't like. You call, first of all, all y'all got each other phone numbers, social medias, I don't fucking know. But to wait till the cameras are rolling to try to confront each other bothers me. Um, but, you know, you know, she was talking about how, you know, she needs to talk to them and, um, Karen's having an event that they're going to be there and all this kind of stuff and, she said she may need to apologize to Sharice. I said, for what? For what? Because Sharice came at you at that dress shopping place. You were coming there to help her regardless of how Sharice felt. Sharice came at her. Sharice came at her foul. So, no, you don't need to apologize. No, if Sharice would have came at you like a grown-ass woman and said, look, I don't like the way things went down at Monique's house and how you inserted yourself. Yeah. But the way Sharice came at her, you came back at her. So, she talked about your husband and all type of shit. You don't need to apologize for fucking nothing, Ashley. Um, so then, they, her mom went in was like, you know, if you apologize, they need to apologize. I said, no, they just need to apologize. Sorry, they just need to apologize. And I'm not with... I'm not with people inserting themselves in people's business and relationships by any fucking means. But don't act like we all don't have those friends if we hear something about a relationship and our friends is in it and they saying one thing and we seeing or hearing something different, we say something about it. Now, the way Ashley probably went about it, maybe you have been wrong. When she went to Giselle about it, that was the right way because she was like, we already have beef and I just was concerned and I want to know how to go about it. When, they, when she talked to Karen about it and all that, bitch, you were being messy. You were being messy as hell. I'm not going to excuse that about Ashley. But they all be talking about each other's fucking relationship. Period. Um, I just, I just was so irritated with Giselle and Robin. So let's talk about Robin. Why she's always talking about her motherfucking man and how he wants her. Bitch, I can't wait to the reunion and they play that back. I can't wait. If anything else I'm waiting on on the reunion part is that part where they play that shit back to her about her motherfucking man. So, um, Mr. He Want Her, but she's the one holding back and yada, yada, yada. He was irritated as hell when he walked in there and she was getting all his stuff done for him, making sure all his shit was straight. Like she does, like a wife's supposed to do. See, when you're doing wifely duties and you're not no wife, he ain't respecting you. I'm just saying. Like, bitch, when he know he can cheat on you and you still gonna be there, that's what, that's what happens. So, I don't know if he forgot he was mic'd the fuck up. But while she was in there getting all his shit squared away and all his camp and all that, he goes and talks to 
the producers and tell them that he don't want to be with her. And if it wasn't for them kids, he would have been gone. And he miserable and all type of shit. And I'm just sitting there like, did he forget he was mic'd up? This is the second season. Did he forget he was mic'd up or he just don't care? Or is this his way of showing her to so far she can finally say, you know what, we are living this fairy tale ass life and I really need to go. Is this his way of showing her because apparently she ain't getting it. Because I was just like, I can't wait for the reunion to play this back the way y'all dogging Ashley. Like, for real. And I know Ashley is at home laughing at y'all ass. So anyway, after that, she meets up with um, Sharice and talks to Dr. Jeff. And he basically told her, you know, it's, you need to let go. You, if In order to be happy... You need to let go. They talked about how she really didn't want to talk to a therapist. And he was like, okay, this is not going to be a therapy session. But I was like, um, it kind of feels like one of me. Kind of feels like one of me. Except you're not asking the questions. Sharice is ask, asking her the questions. But you're engaging in this conversation. And it's not a friendly conversation. So stop this shit that this ain't no damn therapy session. But she ended up breaking down because she know what they were saying to her was true, but she don't want to accept it, and until she accepts it, she gonna keep on going through the same thing with her and her lies, um, Karen, let's talk about Karen, because I just want to end, end this on some positive, um, just on a whole different note, I just didn't want to end this on that bullshit, so, Karen has been dealing with this organization called PAVE. And PAVE deals with people that has been raped or any kind of like sexual assault or stuff like that. So I thought that was an awesome idea to bring this into the show. I have been seeing a whole different side of Karen this season and I'm loving it. I'm loving it and I'm loving how they bring awareness on this show. So first she goes and talks to the lady because they're having this event. And this is where we find out Karen was talking about her daughter, Raven. And she was like, yeah, I went and I took Raven to a self-defense class. And it was very empowering because this whole event is about empowering. So, um, empowering just anybody, women, men, whatever. So, she was saying how they went to the self-defense class. And it was very empowering with her to be with her daughter. And them have to go through something like that because Raven was going off to college. And stuff like that. Um, she also was like, you know, we took it a step further because I really wanted Raven to get it. And she explains how she had been raped when she was in college. And I was just, my heart broke. My heart just was like, oh my God, Karen. Like, I would just would have never thought. Um, and rape don't have no, no face on it. You know what I'm saying? But you would be like, damn, you just would have never thought. So... Well, I'm not going to say it don't have no name. I mean no face. It has many faces. So you will, whoever you would think didn't go through that probably have done, went through that, been close to it. And you just never would have thought. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't want to be insensitive. But she was talking about how she went out with this guy and he raped her or whatever. And it took a lot from her. For 10 years, it took Karen from her. Um, and she started going on this really bad path and stuff like that. And she had to find herself all over again. She said he ended up passing away or whatever. And she had to forgive him. She, to, In order for her to heal, she had to forgive what he, forgive him. Not what he done to her, but forgive him. And, and it empowered her. And I loved her story. I'm telling you, I was like, oh my God, I was just in tears watching her story. And so she has to speak at this event. So they get to this event. And everybody, she invited all the women to the event. She had told, she sat down with Giselle and was telling her about the event because they went to this thing where they were like doing flowers and planting trees and stuff with kids. And I thought that was amazing with Karen. Like I said, we are seeing a whole different side of Karen. Not no snooty Karen, just some real motherly auntie. Just down, I just like Karen this season. So, 
Um, they were talking and just I was like, I ain't never seen her get dirty. And I'm sitting there like, girl, shut up. Why you look what you got on, shut up. But anyway, they sat down and she was telling her about the event and Giselle was like, I'm not going to tell her what we did to Ashley because she's going to look at us and, you know, say that they don't do that. I said, you think, bitch, you think you knew you knew you was wrong. That's why you're not going to tell Karen what y'all did to that girl. Y'all going to let her see what y'all did. Like, that's some bullshit. So, she was like, I don't want no drama at my event because that's not what this is about. So, when they get to the event and Ashley show up, she tells Ashley off rip. I don't want no problems. Ashley is like, this is your night. I'm here for you. Don't even worry about that. So, all the ladies end up coming to the event. Monique, Ashley, Giselle, Robin, Sharice. All of them come. And they come to support her. First, they have Don Lennon from CNN come and talk about his experience through rape. And what some kids did to him when he was young and stuff like that. And I thought that was amazing for him to come and show because I don't know his story. Um, so I thought that was good to show. And then Karen got up there and let it be known to the world of her rape story. Because she really hadn't shared it with anybody probably besides her husband and her daughter. Um, and the people at Paige. But she hadn't shared it with the girls. So when the girls heard about it, they were just like in shock and all like, oh my God. But they all told her, you know, good job. And they was happy to hear her story. They was proud of her and they embraced her. And I thought that was really cool. Her husband was like, I didn't know you were going to talk about this. But he still embraced her and comforted her after she told her story. And I thought that was amazing. So after all of that, you know, she's over there speaking to people, kissing on people, you know, having a good time. And she even told Ashley, like, can we all have a sit down in a couple of days? You know, because this wasn't a time or a place, but in a couple of days, can we have a sit down with all the girls so we can get this squared away and all this yada, yada, yada. And Ashley agreed. So then after all of that, everybody was talking and hugging goodbyes and all that. And Ashley was trying to speak to Sharice and ask Sharice a question or I don't know if she was trying to pull her to the side or whatever it may be. She was trying to speak to her. And Sharice being a petty bitch and just ignored her. I understand you don't like her and y'all have a problem, but I, to me, bitch, she's standing right there just be like, you know what, this it's not the time or the place. But to me, it seemed like y'all want that fire. Y'all want that attention and, and this wasn't the time or the place. So, Giselle was like, this ain't the night, Ashley. This ain't, bitch, you already came to her establishment acting like a bird. So, coming from you, that, she wasn't going to take that with. She was not going to accept that coming from you. That's why I feel like Giselle should have dead in the situation and that would have been it. So, Monique was like, okay, well, maybe this ain't the time or the place. So, Giselle, can I get your number and I can call you or whatever. And Giselle is just like, did Sharice, did you tell her to say that? I'm like, huh? Oh, because I forgot to mention, Karen told Giselle when they were sitting down at the little planning place that Monique caught her a trick. So she's already taken back and feel defense from Monique because she caught her a trick or whatever. And she was just like, oh my God, she called me a trick and you didn't defend me. She was like, no, I didn't laugh, but I didn't defend you. I said, well, at least she honest, hell. So when, at the event, when Monique was trying to get Giselle's number, she was like, oh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I would have deadened it right there and said, you know what? That's okay. That's okay because we're not going to play these petty ass games with you. That's okay. Now, I do agree with Giselle when she, when Monique was like, well, here go my number. Put your number in my phone. No, bitch, that ain't how we do this. Not when we don't like each other. You don't get my phone number, bitch. No, tell me the time, place, and meet each other. But, nah, reach out to the producers. Nah. But for you to put your phone in my face and tell me to put my number in there, no. What you do is, <laughs> nah, that ain't how that work. Nah. Mm -mm. Nah. So I agree with Giselle on that part. But, Giselle, you was a petty bitch. Like, the way you handled that was, you and Giselle handled that was all the way fucking wrong. Y'all handled that all the way wrong. It ended their conversation, and that was that with that show. That's, at least that's all I'm talking about. If I miss something. Oops. But I just felt like they were being petty, and 
I just wait. I want them to all sit down and act like grown ass women and have a conversation because, as I mean, Giselle and Robin need to admit they were wrong for the shit they did at that restaurant. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about Real Housewives of Potomac. I'm quite sure we probably ain't gonna agree with each other because <laughs> y'all like certain people. But this is just my opinion, so we all have them. It's okay. Share your opinion. We be still cool. Um, follow me on all social media sites, but the ghetto view T H A, not T H E, and I'll talk to y'all in the next video.